So let's talk about your Jackrabbit Grids. Jackrabbit Grids were implemented two years ago, uh, but they have you know, taken a lot of changes and they've had new things implemented since the grids first came out. So we are going to be going over everything right now that you can do using your Jackrabbit grid. So I am going to start with your families. So we're going to come in here to all families. First thing, everyone you will notice is that I have a default. On my default is active families. So if I want it to have all of my family show, I just need to remove that. If I want to look for something, I have all kinds of different filter options here. I am not going to go through all of these, but let's just say I wanted to find fixed fees. If I just type in fixed, I can come to this section right here, but I'm not totally sure which filter drawer it would be under. And then next we have your favorites. When you save a favorite, you have the option to make it that default view. So I'm just going to refresh here. So this comes back up to all of my active families right now. And then we have your visuals. So this is, you know, just really one stop, like, boom, I want to see it. If you want to hide these, you have the option right there to hide them. I think these are great because they are clickable. So if I only wanted to see families that have not agreed to all of my current active policies, I can click on this visual. It brings up just those families. And if I needed to, I could email all of them right at once. And we will go over that when we get down to the Google section. Just note, if you click on a visual, you will see the filter does come up here. So I'm just going to remove this one so I can come back to my all families. So very first thing that I'm going to show you, it's been out, uh, it's been out a few months, but some of you may have missed it. We have this now adjust columns. So if I click on this, I can squeeze my grid. So you'll see now everything is there. So everything that I have set as my default columns that I want to show up when I load my active families default will show there. And then as well with that, we have your expand grid. So you can see it here. So now in order to see over, I need to use this slider. Next, we have send a message. So to send a message, you have the option to either send a message one, send an email. If you are set up for texting, you can send a text message. My favorite of all, because 100% transparency, this girl lives on her phone and my life would be totally different if I didn't get push notifications about every other thing that I'm signed up for in classes and just different reminders. So with this send message, you do have the option to send a push notification. If you do have Jackrabbit Plus, uh, for more information on Jackrabbit Plus, you can check that out in our help center and maybe Bethany or Rebecca can throw that link up there for you. So when it comes to emailing in Jackrabbit, so remember I showed you over here, you can do this email text families. Honestly, I just like doing it from the grid. One thing to know, if you select no particular family over here and you click on this send a message send an email it is going to send it to everybody once you get in there though you can still kind of drill down and define your audience so I don't want to send it to my instructors and I don't want to send it to the students I only want to send it just an email only to the primary contact and I don't want to send it to my staff or any other contacts you can absolutely do that and then we have your additional settings so do you want to include people who've opted out of mass emailing and then who else would you want copies so these are my different users and then who do you want your replies to go to so you will notice that right now it defaults to mbaldwin at jackrabbittech.com that is my email address for my user id so if you don't want, if you're sending out an email, but your email address that's tied to your user ID is your own, but you want it to go back to your organization, you just need to come in and click here and then decide which email address you want it. And then next, we have your composer, which is exactly how everything looked under your family's email. Again, we have your templates here. If you want to go ahead and do them, this edit email templates does bring you back to where we were over here. And then you'll go ahead and so I do have to put something in here just to show you. And then I have the ability to attach a file and insert an image. And then right now you can see, so I can see everybody that I have this 
to go to if I wanted to go ahead and individually uncheck somebody I can and as well you do have the option to automate your emails and send them later one thing to note is that this list is not dynamic so let's just say for example I schedule something to send September the 1st and I have 1200 new families join in August this list will be these 39 people not all of those people so next to that we have just to refresh your grid if you need it to refresh it if you want to add a family you can go ahead and add a new family right from here next let's talk about mass actions which this is like my favorite part of all the grids because it saves all of you so 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 much time so let's see what mass actions you can take on your all families. You can update the e-payment schedule. You can make a mass action to family discounts, your family fixed fee, membership types. Uh, you can clear out those user defined fields. So remember I showed you on the family tab, all of those questions that were there. You can actually go in and clear those out if that those are questions that you want to say, pretty much ask like every year for your families. Uh, you have the option to print, and as well, if you need it to, if you're doing something, you need to export your families out to Excel, you can do that. Just like with the email, if I do not select any individual families over here, it is going to make this mass action for every single person. So let's just say here, family discount. So if I wanted to change it out, I can, and then you can see my type here so if i wanted to you know, give everybody a five percent discount that expires let's just say next month i can do that and then i can update it i'm just going to cancel out of that next let me just show you what it looks like so if i click here this is only going to make this action for these three people here you will notice when i uncheck this blue box see how these three vertical dots right next to it click that is because these are row actions that you can take on a family these row actions look familiar they're all those little rectangle boxes that i just showed you on your family but instead of having to go in to click your family find your family you can make that row action right from your jackrabbit grid next i'm going to show you i'm only going to show this just once on uh, our all families because it does kind of all work the same way no matter what grid you are on if I come to any column header here, I can sort ascending, descending, but I can also choose what columns I want to show. So a lot of times, and this is probably one of the most common, I don't want to say misconceptions about the grids, but one of the things that a lot of people really, really do forget when it comes to the grids, we'll have somebody, you know, message us in. And it's like, I just need the first name, the last name, and the email. I need to run a report of it. Like maybe you're using constant contact and that's all you need. You can come in here and do that easily from these grids, guys. Just come in, check which ones you want, and then if you needed to export it, you absolutely can. And let's just, I'm just gonna change that. With your columns, you can change them around. You can move it here, Move this one there if you want it. You can lock a column. So you can see on my classes, if I come to scroll, my location, family, and balance, they always stay. Again, if I needed to, I could always squeeze my grid so that I can see anything. Uh, anything that is blue is clickable. So for my all families, I can click into my family page. I can click onto my student. I can actually click on to all of my current classes and as well anything else that is there uh, one other thing that i will show you really quickly is that you have the ability on your grid uh, not sure. i'm just looking at a question sorry guys uh, okay one other thing that i will show you quickly is that you have the option to group so let's just say i wanted to group um everyone by let's just say i'm going to show a column here zip code and then i can group all of my zip codes so if i take zip and i bring it up here 
see where it says drag a column header and drop it here to group by that column there. And then now all of my zip codes are all grouped together. So if I wanted to see like what area of town or you know what city that everybody was coming in from, like where's my target audience? If I wanted to maybe you know, do a promo or you know, where am I not pulling people in from? Maybe I want to you know target that area to do some kind of the mail or promo. I could easily do that there, and then I could just select everyone. I love grouping. So next, I'm just going to refresh this grid. So next, we are going to go to your all students grid. Let me just check my clock here. So again, your all students grid, it does, you know, it's gonna look very familiar. All uh, your visuals that you can see are, are different on your all students. So you can break down by classes, you know, your student status. Again, my default is that I have it set to show all of my actives. Now, I can easily see any of my absences, any of my drops that I've had, uh, people that are old makeups, and the number of makeups. Your filters, your favorites, or saving your favorites, and turning off your data visuals, just like all families, they all work the exact same way as they do uh, on your all families, grid, students, and classes. So, again, uh, you have your squeeze and expand, the ability to send a message, and the option to refresh on your student grid. And then we have your mass actions on students. So you can actually make a mass action to all of your students at once. So just think back, if you are somebody that uses fixed fees on a student level and you have 5,000 students and you may have like a thousand fixed fees you can actually go in now and clear out all of those fixed fees at the beginning of your next session if you needed to go in and kind of update everything uh, just like with the families we have the option to clear out your user defined fields if those are questions specific on your student level that you are one wanting to ask every other season uh, you have the ability to clear your vaccination status field and the ability to mass add a note print and again, export to Excel. One thing I do wanna let you all know, if you are using user-defined fields, whether it's on your family, whether it's on your student, and you have the option for them to update that in your parent portal, they will actually get an alert for that on their portal when they log in to go in and update that student information. You can, if you want, send out an email, but they will see a little alert there. Okay, so now on your student, there are some things that you also can do um, individually as well. So with these three dots here for your row actions. So on your student, again, you can view and edit. You're able to enroll a student into a class. You can email a specific student just their schedule. So, you know, mom or dad called in or even the student called and is like, yeah, that's where my schedule. Uh, you can get their information sheet, look at any absences or attendance issues. Uh, add a note, and again, on just a student level, you are able to clear your vaccination status field. And again, with your grids, uh, you are able to just like uh, with your all families, you can sort them, you can change them. Just to have a look at your column options on your student, there are tons and tons of column options all the ways down here. So you can show as much as you want. Uh, just a note, earlier I meant, talked about that uh, family ID. You can actually now show that on your family grid and show slash search for it uh, on your family grid and on your students. So right here, this Jackrabbit family ID, that is the one that I showed in the very, very bottom left-hand corner uh, on the page. That is the ID that is created by Jackrabbit. And then family ID is that ID box if you are using your own specific IDs for your families. So that is everything with your students. And next, I'm going to come to your all classes. So your all classes has a lot that you can do. You can see this is my default. You can see, you know, I don't have a lot of things showing 
But again, if I wanted to, I mean, I could come in here and show whatever I wanted at all. And remember, you can always export out any of these that you want if you are looking for just a specific list of things with your classes. Uh, your all classes page, interestingly enough, is the page that families or families that users of Jackrabbit spend the most amount of time on. So we're gonna spend a little bit more time here. So first we have your visuals. So you can, you know, come in here. Again, I've got everything in my database set up to default to active. Uh, you can come in and just bring up only a certain location if you are multiple locations. Uh, just a note, if you are newer to Jackrabbit, adding locations within Jackrabbit, it doesn't have to physically be like Water Street and then like Kombucha Street. It's like it could actually just be within the same physical location, but you can have multiple locations within Jackrabbit. And then next we've got your status. So you can see mine right here is active. If I undo this, then it will show, I can just show my inactive classes. So I'm just gonna keep going with active. These are all of my different sessions that I have on the go right now. We will talk a little bit more. I'll show some more about sessions and what will show here now. But these are sessions that I currently have set to be visible to my Jackrabbit users. They may not necessarily be visible to all of my Jackrabbit parents in the portal or when they're in law, enrolling story in a class, but these are all of my sessions that I have available for my Jackrabbit users. And then next we have category one, and then with sessions and with category one, with active enrollments. So if you come in here and you see some classes and you're like, my classes are missing, most likely, it is because it is a class maybe that you've got, you know, set up for 2023 that doesn't have anybody enrolled in it yet. Uh, if you want it to look up those classes you, under reports, you can easily go to classes and search. And the next we've got your absences, any drops that may have occurred. And then next to your drops, we've got all of your classes with openings. So if you just wanna see like, okay, where do I need to, you know, get filled up? Where do I have the option to enroll a person you know, in a class? You only want classes with openings shown. We have you covered there with a visual. So I'm gonna remove this filter. And then next to your openings, this just lists ones that have my most, my classes that have wait lists. So if I wanted to quickly see all of my classes that currently have a wait list. So these classes are full and they do have a wait list. It is all of these here. So I'm just going to sorry and check this. And then as well, you can see just my top five there. So again, I'm just going to bring up your filters here. So we have your filters are broken down. We refer to them as drawers. So they're broken down by location, class details, class schedule, enrollment details. And there, there's also a section for policies if you want. You can actually expand them all if you're not totally sure what you're looking for. And then literally just scroll down. So see if I only want to show classes with openings or without openings. Maybe I want to email all my classes that are full so that the instructors know like, hey, your class is at max. I'm going to be opening uh, a wait list for it. You could easily do that. You can search by tuition fee if you want it. I'm just going to close this out here. So again, let's talk about your mass actions for your grid. So first of all, again, we have your adjust. So if I had a whole bunch of columns in here, I could squeeze in my grid. So everything shows on my screen at once. Your ability to send a message, again, send a message, send an email, send a text, or the lifesaver, send a push notification. And then next right here, we have your filtered calendar. So this will bring up my calendar based on whatever filters I have set here. So if I had only just wanted to look at all of my classes for my cheer location and I click on my filtered calendar, 
I can bring it up here and it will show me only my calendar for that set of classes. There's really no other way to kind of get this, but it is a most definite time saver. Um, on our uh, jackrabbitclass.com webinars page, there is a webinar that goes over all of the weekly calendar. We refer to it as your command central because you can do a lot from there. That is a little bit more advanced than what we are going to be covering today. But just to let you know, your weekly calendar is there. And if you want to filter on it, the best way to do it is to come in through here. So I'm just going to remove this filter. Again, if I wanted to, I could refresh. So very first thing, I'm sure all of you know, it's this one. It's just to add a new class. You can just come right in here and add a class anytime that you want. And it does look exactly like it looks if you were to come under your classes to add a class, exactly what I had just shown before. So I'm going to close this. Okay. Let me just check the chat. Yes, we are going to take a break. And yes, there will be a recording. The recording will get emailed to everybody on Monday. Uh, it will be a private YouTube link that will be available only for two weeks. Uh, within that link in the description, I'm going to have every section, the times broken down. So if you have to pop off at like 2.08, you'll be able to just, you know, scroll over and go to that section. Or if you only just want to save review the section, the last section of today, uh, going over staff, you can automatically just go to whatever section you need. This is your training. So I, you know, I decide what we're doing based on feedback that I get from you guys. So if you only need one specific section, it's absolutely fine to go ahead and technically fast forward to it. Is there a way to sort by instructor, say for absences and to email just those classes? You absolutely can. Um, so if I, Teacher asks this columns. If I showed instructors right here, so I don't see, I don't even have mine done. And then if I want it to sort them, or if I want it to you know, group by instructor, I could come here and do that. So I'm just going to close this off. Okay. Mass actions on classes. There's a lot you can do here. This is why this is like time saver central. You can in mass, so remember, like I said before, if you select nobody on the left, it will take everybody. So right now it's taking every single active class because that's what I have up in my filter here. You are able to go in and in mass at a resource. So say for example, it was that, you know, private YouTube link to your recital. You could go ahead and add this to all of your classes. You can easily add your policy groups as well. You can remove your policy groups. If you're gonna add them, then you gotta have a way to remove them. Uh, you can mass drop. So let's just say, use an instructor as an example. Let's just say I want it to group by instructor. I want it to take everyone. Okay, Amber's got a lot of classes. Well, let's just say we wanted to select all of Amber's classes and mass drop. Let's just say they, she broke a leg, she's moved, whatever the case may be. Sorry, Amber. Um, you can go ahead and add that. Love grouping. And next, you can make a mass edit. So if I click on mass edit, it brings you to the familiar classes edit all classes page. So if you were to come in from classes, edit all classes, I'm just going to show you what the difference is. Right here, you have your different filtering options coming in from your classes, all classes. It will be whatever I've got selected here for my filter. So I'm just going to make a mass edit to all of my active classes. And let's just say, you know, I want it to go in and update my tuition fee. I could make that change globally to everybody at once. So let's just say I'm going to change my max wait list to five. There's a method to my madness here. 
So you'll note I am viewing one of 50. If I come to page two right now, look at my max weight. It is three. So when you, oopsies, sorry. So when you come in to your classes, edit all classes, and you have pages here, you need to make sure that you click on to show all. So now you can see I'm viewing all of them. So you can see right here, max size. I'm sorry, max weight. So I'm now gonna change my maximum wait time to all five, or two, two five for all of my classes, and yes. And there we go. I'm just going to come back. I'm just going to click out of this one. So now I am back here on my edit all classes grid. And then as well, you can in mass, you can add a note, have the option to print, and again, export to Excel. So let's have a quick look at what it is that you can do when it comes to your classes individually. So if we click on these three blue dots, so I can come in here, and this is, I would say, one of the reasons why most users spend most of their time on this page is all of the things that you can do for your class individually without actually having to even click on the class. You can view it if you want to, but you're able to enroll a student. You can email and text a specific class. You can get to those absences post class transactions, copy a class, mass drop, add a note, add a resource, and archive a class. So some of you might know what I'm talking about and others of you might not get it, but a lot of people in today's world count clicks. They're like, I don't wanna click. I don't wanna have to click to find, to go, to look, to search. We totally get it. This prevents you from having to click. It prevents you from having to actually list a class click on the class, and then click on to enroll a student. You would actually literally do it right from here and then enroll your student. So it just makes everything a lot easier. And then as well, again, I'm just gonna quickly show you all of your columns that are here. So again, like I had said, I don't have a lot of columns selected on mine, but again, you can show absolutely anything and everything that you want to search and or filter on for your grids. So just one quick note on grids. Grids are in a lot of different reports in Jackrabbit. Like I mentioned earlier, soon you will be able to email uh, you know, from a transaction search. That will actually be a grid. So once you have your families, your students, and your classes grids, Kind of, you know, you're used to them going in, what a mass action is, I you know, to a group or what if you to take an action on an individual row, all of your grids are going to work the same. Best part is, is all you have to do is come here and click on either the three dots here or your three dots here. They are on all of the grids to view what it is that you can do. So either in mass or just specifically. So I'm just going to click out of this. So one other thing that I have not talked about are these little boxes that are here. When the grids first came out, these boxes were not here. So if I wanted to just search on every class that had a size of five, I can search from within this box. If I wanted to you know, see everybody that had a certain policy group assigned, I can search in here. And as well, I'm just gonna refresh my grids. If I wanted to, let's just say sort. So if I click on my column header here, so for size, I can sort right here. And then just click it again, and there you go. So I'm just gonna keep this sort here. So everything stays alphabetical for me. And that is everything on your Jackrabbit grids, everybody. I know that that was a lot, and I know I may have gone over uh, some of it a little bit fast, but I encourage all of you to just, just take 
and harness the power of your jackrabbit grids. If you have any questions at all, please just reach out to support. You can reach live support uh, either through submit a ticket, live chat, request a call through those three buttons there on the bottom. This is from when you click your question mark within your database. And then as well across the top, we have all of your self-serve options, access to the help center, the video, YouTube help, staff training options if you're getting ready and onboarding new employees. And then as well, that same link that I actually popped up earlier for you for your e-payment resources. And that is it, everybody. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you all real soon.